ERA Championship is the world's first all-electric junior formula racing series. There's no career ladder right now between electric karting and any of the other series out there, like ETCR for example. So for a young driver or a driver with less experience or a driver that is looking for maybe a more grassroots motorsport feel, there's no electric series where they can be involved and where they can actually race and get to drive cars. We thought this was an incredible opportunity and a big gap in motorsport and that it needed to be filled in order to create a career ladder and make an accessible and open series where anybody can join and race an electric car and that's not available at the moment. ERA was founded by a group of kind of motorsport enthusiasts that were working in the industry in various different spaces, myself included. I used to organise a Formula student in the UK and 30% of our student teams back then were running electric cars. So I was seeing the power and the ability of electric cars from a way back and this was before we were seeing electric motorsport on track or as it was just emerging. It was uh, one of those typical things where a bunch of enthusiasts talk and talk and have ideas ideas and what t starts out as you know a, a casual chat after a race with a bunch of friends at, at, at the racetrack and it became ERA Championship after a few years but for sure it's really evolved um, and developed a lot and we found uh, a real niche and a space where people really really need this and it's, it's a kind of an integral part or an integral step in the motorsport pyramid. For us, we look at everything from a holistic perspective and our core values are based around sustainability, accessibility and equality. And that really runs through everything we do. The weight of the car is 690 kilos, uh, including driver. So it's actually a, quite a light car. We, we built the car to be similar to a Formula 4. Also the, uh, the horsepower is the same. So we have 130 kilowatts. Top speed is 210 kilometers per hour. So again, it's, it's similar as a Formula 4. And the battery is 24.7 kilowatt hours. Obviously we need to charge and that takes a bit longer than just put fuel in it. We have to deal with, but we can we can actually charge it in 40 minutes. So it's, it's actually not that not that bad. The car is really a tool for us to bring innovation, and not only on it being an electric car, but also being an IoT device, having Wi-Fi around the car, having telemetry, all those things already are able to do is is quite amazing. So we are in Hungary, we're at the Hungara Ring. It's really exciting, it's the first time we've driven our cars here. It's a new car, it's a new series, and our drivers are not experienced with the cars. My name is Bende Guzmolar, I'm 24, and I'm a racing driver. I'm Kata Bozo, I'm 25 years old, and I'm a racing driver. I'm Milan Delat, I'm 19 years old, and I'm a driver of the Euro Championship. The Mitsubishi F110E is obviously it's the first ever all-electric junior Formula race car, so that's special in itself. Um, the chassis is based on a Dome Formula 4 chassis, so we work with Dome in Japan, and I think it's the first time that the Dome Formula 4 has been used in Europe, which is really exciting in itself, and the name of the car was named in honour of, of its Japanese heritage. Most of the things that we are doing is, is being used in Formula One, but not in the junior series. So we have full telemetry of everything in the car. The full CAN data goes into the cloud and gets captured in, in the platform of Software AG. Mainly, we can now give the driver immediate feedback about what's happening with the car and what they should change, rather than they come in and you talk to them and now we can like straight away tell them what they should do or what they should do different so they can have a quicker learning curve. Also, because it's electric, you can make the cars very much equal and we can show that with the data and even with the live data, we can show them that, look, your car is as similar as a mechanical machine can be. We can always find the issue, if there's an issue, really quickly. If it's a car, if it's a driver, whatever it is, because 
We, we have so much data on every little bit of the car. If it, it's never a difficult conversation because the data speaks for you. And you know, if it's the car, we find any issues really quickly and we solve them. Sometimes it's a car, sometimes it's a driver, sometimes it's a combination of both. You're doing something wrong or you're doing something right and we can show you. I was uh, doing uh, motorbiking around 12 years old. Uh, we just re realized the uh, competition. Yeah, I was uh, took uh, part in that competition and I won that. So uh, this is how I, I get uh, into car racing. I started racing at my ninth. I uh, started at indoor karting, then went outdoor. Um, then I did, did Formula Ford. Um, I was French champion. Then a little bit in England, Formula Ford. Um, then due to the Corona issues, I went to Ford Fiesta Sprint Cup in Belgium. And then I landed here in our championship. I'm racing since 2016. I was racing first with the Belgian racing license. And also I was starting with endurance racing. I was also doing sometimes sprint races like the Ford Fiesta Sprint Cup. I was really excited that I got this opportunity. As much seat time and as much track time as they can get is really important so that we can fully kind of train them to how to drive efficiently. Uh, it's not just a pedal to the metal, like all out the whole time. You have to sort of think a little bit about how you're going to reserve your energy and if you're going to use a bit more that lap to overtake. So it's, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of strategy. It was a lot of fun. But you also have to keep in mind that it's a very different way of driving than with a fuel engine car. But yeah, I'm here to learn and everybody is here to learn, also the team and we as a driver also. The key thing to note is that you have to drive it very differently. So it can do the same thing as a Formula 4, but if you want to conserve energy, if you want to drive efficiently, if you want to manage the car in the right way, it'll do a different lap time and it'll do a different, you know, it'll be a different race because it's a different technology. So it's a very conscious decision to make this car as a Formula 4 car. What's the most tricky part that you cannot break into the corner and start to accelerate while you are still on the brakes? So that's really, I have to change it in my mind. Other than that, that was the only thing where I was really had to think about it a lot to change my driving style a little bit. Motorsport is now in a point where it's changing and we're making it more open and more accessible for everyone. And that's a really important part of the message for us is that we are open to anybody and anybody is welcome to join ERA. Was it okay? Was it too tight? It was good. Yeah, it was good. So I think uh, this championship is, is very good because uh, all the drivers who would like to start racing, it's a great option because it's uh, more affordable than, than normal Formula 4. It's a good and great opportunity for all the, the young drivers who, who wants to be uh, maybe Formula E drivers later. It's very good. When we were designing and building the ERA race car, um, we definitely ensured that it's an affordable car in terms of the total car price and we've we've achieved that from what I see anyway but also we we packed it through filled with like cutting edge technology as well so it's really important that we stay ahead of the times especially with electric cars it's important that we stay relevant that and the fact that we try and keep our prices as low as possible for drivers that's kind of the dream for us is eventually we want to have drivers being able to come to us that have talent and that's the main criteria for driving with us I think the positive shock is the big difference. How different it is in a positive way. And when people understand that they go, oh, right. Now, you know, I see what you're doing. This is amazing. Like, uh, I want more of this. I want to understand it more. I need to really use my brain to drive this car and really figure this car out. My first impression after the first lap was like, wow, this is so much fun. Also, I'm driving now here in Hungary as a Hungarian driver with a big crowd on the grandstands. So that also gave an extra good feeling while I was driving. 
So obviously sustainability, it's easy to say yes we're electric and that, that ends there but it's, it's actually much more complex than that and our sort of way of managing this is to be quite transparent and we know that motorsport isn't perfect and that we're not 100% sustainable and everything we're doing isn't, isn't perfect but we are open to kind of looking at our flaws and saying what can we do better and some of these things are maybe not nice marketing stories always. Thank you so much. How can we have less plastic in the paddock? How can we make our crew bring reusable bottles? Is there things we can do with the car? Can we make bits of the car out of recycled materials? And then when it comes to the charging, obviously we have quite small batteries in our car because they, they're, they're quite small cars, they don't weigh a lot. So we can have quite a lot of sustainable options and we don't need any, any non-clean energy to, to charge our cars. So there's a lot of small things that we can look at and these all add up. And even just having like plant-based options in the paddock for people to eat, um, all these little things come together. To get sponsors in electric racing, uh, it's a lot easier than combustion engine because it's electric and all the companies want to go green. For my generation, uh, what I see, especially in, in Hungary, yeah, they always talk about uh, clean cars and, and electric cars and something like that, and, and they love it. It's a new generation like I think this really is the future of racing and I'm glad to be a part of it. It was always my dream to race with formula cars or with cars with high aerodynamics so it's kind of a dream coming true for me. To be kind of at the front of this new era for motorsport and to think that we could potentially shape the future careers of not only our drivers, but our staff, our team, our mechanics, our engineers, um, everybody that's working with us. We can now evolve and we can move forward and ERA is the perfect platform to do that. I'm really honored that I've been able to kind of realize a dream.